Good morning, Bobcats, and welcome to another episode of The Sage. I'm Bella Neems. And I'm Nick Sepak, and today we've got a lot in store for you. October is spooky season, but this isn't just because of the four-foot little monsters running around begging for candy. No, it's definitely not. October is when wildfire season begins to pick up. Which is especially important to us because our school is situated next to rolling hills of wildlife and dead brush. Bella, as well as Tristan Hoffman and Chloe Neal, headed out into the field to give us a little more information on exactly what is going on. Thanks, guys. I'm here reporting on site at Camp Pendleton. Behind me stands 140 acres of protected mil military land that were sent aflame last Tuesday, October 22nd. This fire was started amid hot temperatures and dry air, but did not pose any threat to surrounding areas. Though it was 35% contained by Wednesday morning, brush fires like these do happen quite often around this time of year, October being the height of what is deemed as wildfire season. So fires are a natural part of our ecosystem. We live in the most endangered ecosystem on the planet, which is the Southern California Chaparral. Winds will come out of the east as opposed to coming from the west. And that's what creates these Santa Ana wind conditions. Um, particulates in the air can get into your air passageways and into your lungs, and that can be uh, dangerous. Fall athletes experience these dangerous conditions frequently during the fire season. Cross-country runners still having to bear the heat and fire dangers while preparing for upcoming races. On a hot day, we usually start off normally with our warm-up and our drills, but then afterwards, we usually have reduced m mileage, which is like 10 minutes less. Or if our workout, we'd stick to like a regular workout and just go through it. I definitely think that with the heat and like the Santa Ana winds, um, it makes like running a little bit harder. I think we're more worried about getting a bit too dehydrated and having, you know, the danger of getting like a headache or even passing out. Like we have to drink a lot more water. We spoke with Justice Whitaker, a fire explorer based in Escondido, on how Sage Creek students and athletes alike can stay safe and healthy during this wildfire season. When there's a lot of smoke in the air and possibly some ash, um, probably not the best idea to physically train outside, maybe go inside a facility. I wouldn't recommend working outside where there's possibly ash in the air, which could affect your breathing. With Sage Creek neighboring dry bush and flammable trails, it's better to err on the cautious side and stay safe during these hot temperatures and high fire conditions. This has been Tristan Hoffman, Isabella Neems, and Chloe Neal reporting for the Sage. Now back to the anchors. I would definitely advise our dedicated athletes to be careful during this time. I agree, and Fire Explorer Whitaker was able to give us some useful safety tips about our home environment. Speaking about home environment, did you know that a mandatory bill was passed in California that all schools were to begin at 8.30? I did, especially because this will become a procedure in 2022 when I am a senior. That's incredible that you'll be able to witness this change. Yes. Well, let's send it off to Emily Friedman and Skyly Januzzi to get some more information and see how the community feels about this. California will become the first state in the nation to push back school start times. Public middle schools will be required to start at 8 a.m. or later, while public high schools will begin no earlier than 8.30 a.m. This law will take effect in the beginning of the 2022 to 2023 school year. I spoke with some fellow staff and students to hear their thoughts on this subject. So based on research um, and your guys' age range, it's it's going to be beneficial for you. So teenagers should be sleeping at minimum eight hours, which I know some of you are probably like, we don't sleep anywhere close to that, but you should be really sleeping at least eight hours, closer to nine or 10. It's based on your circadian rhythm and then based on the way that you, like your body and your hormones and your growing that you're doing, starting later would be more beneficial to your age group specifically. On the contrary, Many people believe starting later will not be beneficial. I think the intentions behind it are great, but I still think students are going to stay up late doing homework or do their homework in the morning like I do on late starts, and I don't think it'll have that much of an effect on academic performance or our sleep. I think after school it might be harder because of everyone's extracurricular activities and sports and everything they have going on outside of school. Okay. 
So I've got a lot of thoughts on it. Uh, my first thought is it, it's not a bad thing, right? Uh, any, but anytime you can get more sleep, uh, you're going to be better off, I think. Um, but I think there's a lot of um, other factors that go into it, especially at the high school level. So uh, one of them being, uh, will high schoolers really get more sleep or will they just stay up later and get up later? Um, that's a possibility. Uh, I did a survey of my kids. Uh, out of uh, roughly 100 students, 70% of them prefer the schedule the way it is now versus a proposed schedule of getting up an hour later but also staying in school an hour later. It's hard to accommodate every student's needs with later or earlier start times. However, this later start time law will go into effect in the 2022-2023 school year. This has been Emily Friedman and Skyly Januzzi reporting for The Sage. Now let's send it over to Leo Ambrogelli for a live interview with the field hockey team. Hey Bobcats, my name is Leo Ambrogelli and I'm live here with three members of the girls field hockey team. Raymond Lestrada, Caitlin Kennedy, and Talon Dunn. So Talon, could you tell me a little bit about how your season has been going? Uh, I actually think it's been going really good. Our score for our winnings of games may not reflect that, but I think that um, our players just keep getting better and better, and this season I've seen a lot of improvement even from last year. I've only been doing field hockey for two years, but I definitely have seen a lot of improvement, and this is one of our best years, so I think we're doing really good. Well, winnings aren't everything. Next year, you guys will be able to hit it even harder with uh, like all the preparation and work you guys have been putting in. Mm -hmm. So, Caitlin, I hear you are a uh, team captain this year. Can you tell me a bit more about like what that role means within the context of field hockey? Yeah, so this is my first year as team captain, and basically I just get to have more influence on team strategy and like what we do in practice. So I collaborate a lot with Miss Fett, and it's been great. So Ms. Fett is the head coach for the field hockey team, correct? Yes. And could you tell me a bit more about um, like coaching players into becoming better goalies and better players? Yeah, so we, we started out this year with a lot of new players. So it's been a large, a large part of our season has been getting the basics down. Um, for me, that means I've been coaching two new goalies, um, Calista Jordan and Destiny Smith, and I'm basically just pouring all of my field hockey knowledge into them before I graduate so they can continue my goalie legacy, I guess. <laughs> well, fundamentals are the key to success, right? Uh, Remy, so the head coach of the field hockey team, Mrs. Fett, she's known primarily as an English teacher and a volleyball player here at Sage Creek. In fact, on the outside of her room, if I remember correctly, she has this plaque that says, Mrs. Fett, Warrior Volleyball. And I was wondering, has she told uh, has she told you guys about how she came to coach the field hockey team? Um, Miss Fett was a student athlete in college and high school, and she did volleyball and soccer. Um, so she she's our new coach this year, and she took the position because there wasn't really anyone else who would take it. And she's doing a really good job. She's really committed to coaching us really well and she knows what it's like to be on a high school sport team. So she knows like the struggles, the ups and downs, and she's doing a very good job. Well, it sounds like hard work is going to be the key to success for our Bobcats next year, and for the rest of the season this year too. I'm so glad that we were able to catch up with our field hockey team, but I really wish that I was around to see what effects will come from the drastic change in school start times. I'm looking forward to getting more sleep, yet this means that we won't be getting out of school at 3.30, which will be a very big difference. I completely agree, especially for students in sports. They can now be missing more than just last period. I can see that. Hopefully it will all work out. Now we will be sending it off to Eric Plotkin for a PSA on our Halloween safety. There's a lot of dangers out tomorrow night, so be careful. This is, is how to stay safe, 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 on, safe on, on Halloween night. Don't open your door to strangers on Halloween night. Stranger danger. Oh no! Remember to always check your candy for dangerous substances. You never know what could be in here. Oh! Would you look at that? I found a Chromebook charger. Imagine what would happen if I ate this. But some candies can pack a nice treat, like this Hydro Flask. 
Remember to stay hydrated when you're doing some trick or treating. Thanks for watching tips and, and on how to stay safe. That gave me a much needed laugh. Me too, but it also made me think twice about my Halloween plans. It's always better to be safe than sorry, especially since the crime rates on Halloween night go up by 17%. Well, that's certainly something to be frightened about. Even though I'm overly excited for tomorrow night, let's see what was happening last week in sports. Good idea. Karen Hernandez is going to give us all the news updates about our games to look out for. Good morning, Bobcats. I'm Karen Hernandez and welcome back to Sports and Announcements. Last Thursday, girls volleyball beat Oceanside 3-0. On Friday, Varsity Cross Country had their invitational at Mount Sac. Girls won the Division 3, 4, and 5 sweepstakes race, with their top six girls placing in the top three. JV Cross Country competed at the Kit Carson Jaguar invite. Boys got sixth place and girls placed seventh. Girls golf had their playoffs today at the crossings. Girls Varsity Volleyball plays at El Capitan today. Tomorrow, Cross Country has their Avocado East cluster number two. Now for some announcements for this week. Sage Creek Comedy Sports had their first match on Tuesday against Carlsbad. Good job to everybody who participated. ASB will be holding a costume contest at lunch tomorrow. Make sure your costumes are school appropriate. No masks, face paint, or weapons of any kind are permitted. The dress code does apply. Over the course of October, we've opened up the opportunity for Sage Creek students to write a short story and enter in a contest. Congratulations to Trisha Tong, who wrote Surprise at Santa. We're so excited to publish your story on the website. On that note, I hope everybody has a fun and safe Halloween. This has been Karen Hernandez with Sports and Announcements. Now back to the anchors. Congratulations to the short story contest winner. Yes, we can't wait to see your story published on our site so that everyone gets to read it. This year has been very productive so far for the Sage, from short story contests to covering fall sports to our weekly news updates. It definitely has been. Our reporters have been working diligently to give great journalism coverage this year. Kyle Asin and Ben's Russell Lopez are here to show you just how dedicated our team is. It's incredible to see reporters covering local stories and also international ones. From the Academic Mall to downtown La Jolla to college campuses, the Sage is committed to capturing the hidden stories and the hard news. I, for one, cannot wait to see what the rest of this year holds. But for now, you can continuously check out coverage on Instagram by following at the Sage Publication. Or heading to our website, thesagenews.com, to check up on our newest articles, like the new Windmill Food Court, or even world news such as the Hong Kong protests, and checking up on our community through our weekend photos. Thank you for watching. This has been Bella Neems. And Nick Sepek, reporting for The Sage.